Bonjour à tous. So, hello everyone. I'm Gilles Ravo and I'm Associate Professor of Economics, where Bernard Maris used to work. Uh, the Institute of European Studies, uh, which is at a small public university, uh, uh, Paris 8. Uh, so if you want, uh, if you know people who want to come and study with us, I encourage you to send them to us. It's a, we have a very interesting research team. So now we'll move in uh, to the more uh, academic side of our event here and uh, so uh, it uh, we've had some very interesting people who have accepted to join us and speak to us today who are from our scientific committee so we have uh, three people we'll be hearing from this afternoon so i will introduce firstly we have andre orleans and i would like to quote him and I, I, everything that André Orléans is wonderful. He's a hard worker with a very open mind. And I'm quoting, as you can guess, Bernard Maris speaking of André Orléans. So who is André Orléans? Well, he's had many titles in French research. He's a, a, a a head of research at the National Institute. He's also president of the uh, French Institute of uh, Political Economy and with Juliette Shaw and Chimère Dio, who will also be speaking to us uh, this afternoon. So uh, André Orléans is a specialist on questions of value and I recommend his latest work called The Empire of Value. Uh, and the subtitle is uh, Refounding the Economy. Uh, as, as students of economics know, André Orléans has worked some, uh, written some reference works on money. Uh, these works, uh, such as Violence and Money, or Money Between Confidence and Violence, and uh, for, and this, to him, it is a question of uh, violence. And uh, Bernard uh, was also very attentive to this notion of the violence of econo economics. Uh, so for André Orléans, says there is no value in and of itself. There are only social arrangements which are more or less stable around value. In other words, uh, the, uh, his work tells us that the founding of all value is political and social, and we know that it is uh, that aspect that is truly lacking in our European currency in particular. So for André Orléans, as he's always shown, the economics has three characteristics. First of all, it's political. Secondly, economics is a social science. It's multidisciplinary. And it must be pluralistic. It can only function if it opens up to other approaches. So the political aspect, the social sciences, and plurality, all of these are light motives of Bernard Maris's thinking as well. And uh, Marisa said of Orléans, if there hadn't been the school of the conventions uh, where uh, André Orléans teaches, of course, uh, Bernard Marie said he would have stopped his research in economics. So I think we have to thank André Orléans for having saved Bernard Maris. Uh, I mean, who, would, who might have become, oh horrors, a sociologist. So André Orléans will tell us about the radical thinking of Bernard Maris. He really took things at the roots to demystify them. This has been said, of course, before, but uh, it's important to say we must continually demystify the mainstream economic thinking. Uh, André. Hello, everyone. So the title of my talk is uh, For the Sake of Bernard Maris. And so in today, as we pay tribute to his memory through the creation of this UNESCO chair, it seems important to me 
to specify the nature of this project and uh, to look at the economist Benamalis and what he thought of his own specialty. And there's uh, plenty of food for thought here for the scientific committee who's going to have the difficult task of defining the shape of this new chair. Uh, and so, uh, let's now take stock of who Bernard Maris was himself. He was an economist, a true economist, above all. Before becoming such an incisive journalist that we know of, before that, he worked in Toulouse at an economics research center uh, and uh, very committed to his research. In a short work he uh, entitled How I Became an Economist, he explained how he became an economist and he said, economics seemed to me the only social science that could give me the keys to understanding that I was looking for. I wanted to understand in order to be able to counter inequality. The poverty in developing countries was a, is a terrible concern to me, and it was a much more open period at the time. Marxism, for example, was still very full of meaning and still strong. I read a lot of Marx, and I must say I enjoyed it. It was not at all a chore for me, and uh, that uh, end of quote. And uh, many of us after 1968 uh, believed, as he did, uh, that uh, that uh, we should that research in economy was part of our social engagement. Uh, and Ben Maris was not an economist like others. He belongs to that category of economists which Keynes called the heretics. Uh, well, today we say rather heterodox economists. So those like Keynes uh, who rejected the idea of this self-regulated competition or the invisible hand because he doesn't believe that the markets adjust themselves automatically. And we can say that Maris belongs to the rather radical wing of heterodoxy. And a great deal of his work consisted of a frontal attack on what we call the mainstream e econ economics uh, or uh, neoclassical theory. And his criticism was ferocious and devastating. And uh, you can get a, a, a feel of this if you read any of his works. Uh, it is, uh, he's very clear in his orientation. So let's look at some of those. And uh, from there, perhaps this can inspire us uh, in ideas for the chair. One of his central theories emphasize the fact that uh, new classic theories uh, use hypotheses that are totally unrealistic. For example, the idea that homo economic, uh, economicus uh, uh, behaves in a rational way. But all of this is based on purely imaginary ideas. And so for Maris, these are pure exercises in logic, not social sciences. And in 2003, in his uh, open letter to the economics gurus who take us for idiots, he said very clearly, and I quote, uh, the economics has become a system where we draw logical conclusions implied by a number of premises and postulates. And no matter if these premises are true, and in fact, they aren't true, the only important thing is to show that the conclusions are the logical consequences of the premise. And Bernard Maris uh, 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 says there's no problem with this so long as econ economists uh, present themselves for what they are, i.e. logisticians. And he said, uh, 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 please say that you are logisticians. You have no toolbox. You have no duties. You have no advice to give or to recommend. No laws to suggest. You have nothing. So, for heaven's sakes, say so. That's what he uh, could not tolerate was that e economists present themselves as scientists in the same way as a physicist or biologist. And he was very violent in his uh, description of the Nobel Prize of uh, e economy. And 
as he said about economics. In the short term, nothing will change so long as there will be the Nobel Prize of the Bank of Sweden. He considered it a usurpation, a sham, that the Bank of Sweden should uh, give a Nobel Prize. And he said that he didn't think that it was likely to go away anytime soon. Now, he was very indignant over this, uh, particularly over uh, economists who transform themselves into experts and who come to give lessons to, t to uh, our heads of state and to the media. And he said it's a great temptation to call oneself an expert. Uh, and it's dishonest when you claim to be an expert. An expert is always dishonest because he takes the complexity of a science of which he knows very little uh, or even nothing. Uh, he said this was false advertising because economics is radically powerless in guiding public action because it is totally cut off from reality. And he said that its uh, economic theory tells us nothing about the world because it can show everything and it's contrary. And he said, anything coming from economics is unverifiable, unsanctionable, but can always be proven as we can com prove uh, the complete opposite. So economics as uh, like voodoo ignores this principle of contradiction. And he often compared economics with religion in particular. And he concluded that you can say what you like. You can say anything you want in economics. It's meaningless. But another Nobel Prize winner, Paul Samuels, Samuelson, who is very orthodox in his theory, he said nothing is impossible in such an inexact science as economics. And so, in fact, Maris uh, was not the only one who uh, to say such things. However, me way wonder that under these conditions, why do those economic experts have such success? If they can't prove that their advice is true, then why do we listen to them? Uh, uh, so this is a, a question that Maurice asked himself a great deal. And, uh, and he uh, looked to a rhetoric to explain this. And he, uh, in fact, gave a seminar on uh, rhetoric to look at the language of economics, in particular its use of statistics. And this is a very interesting uh, aspect of his thinking. Uh, now, I can't go into all the complexity of uh, what he wrote, but uh, one of his main ideas was that the figures or numbers are by nature a camouflage because they present reality under a distorted and euphemized form. And in his work, The Economist Above All Sus Suspicion, that was in 1990, he said, by putting a number on evil, it is no longer longer an evil. So this is a very interesting idea. And so, for example, 10% unemployment doesn't tell us anything about the suffering of the unemployed and turns our attention away from the people who are unemployed because numbers uh, create a coolness and a distance. Uh, He said numbers are considered to bring a calm scientific veracity. They are considered unbiased. And he wrote, the neutrality of numbers speak to a, a, of scientific authority and an authorized discourse. This authorized discourse is not meant to be understood, but to be recognized. And he added, what is so striking in democratic moments, such as in the Etat General of the Revolution, uh, there were no numbers used, as if the, the political uh, will uh, understands that this, in, in, this incompatibility between co political will and statistics. So this is an avenue that I think deserves more research. Uh, so 
And what about uh, John Maynard Keynes? This, uh, Bernard Maris uh, was a great admirer to, him, to Maris. Uh, he was uh, the perfection of the, of the economist as a man. So Maris was a great admirer and wrote a great deal about Keynes. And one of the reasons he admired Keynes it was because Keynes was an economist who really brought back passion to economic analysis and broke away from the schematics of mainstream thinking. Uh, and Maris was particularly interested in what Keynes said about the desire for money, the morbid desire for liquidity, as Keynes called it. Uh, Mary said that this desire for liquidity escapes all rational thinking because its determining factors are coming from the, de the depths of human psyche. Uh, and so here we have a psychoanalyst who are sitting down to table with e economists. And in his work, Capitalism and the Death Wish in 2009, in that work, he gives us a very disturbing new view of capitalism and its underlying forces. So, I think uh, based on uh, some of the things I've just said, I think we have some ideas of what the Benamaris chair should be. So, my proposals, uh, uh, you can see some uh, summary of this on the website of the foundation. So, for example, uh, there has to be a renewed form of education on economics that must be more cross-disciplinary uh, based on a very different epistemology. So, to begin, I'd say that more than ever today, economics needs more critical and rebellious minds along the lines of Bernard Maris. Uh, that's my first point, because Maris himself was very aware of this lack of plurality in the teaching of and research on economics, and particularly in France, and he deplored this situation. So Bernard Maris was also French Association of Political Economy, of which I'm president, and the aim of that association is to ensure that a economics will n is not a uh, monolithic or monochrome. He, he wanted everyone to understand that there are several types of several ways to study and understand economics. Uh, and uh, this is particularly striking in France, uh, where the uh, it's very marginalized any heterodox uh, thinking. Uh, as he said, you know, he would have stopped his research if he hadn't been saved by uh, some of the things he read uh, coming from some counter currents uh, in thinking. And he said, when I finished writing my thesis, when I saw many of the dead ends of economics, and yet that was uh, becoming the dominant current, I really knew, I nearly threw in the towel. And so I think that this UNESCO chair needs to be attentive to those doubts. Uh, I think that should be one of the missions of the UNESCO chair to act as a forum for exchange where these doubts can be expressed. As for some of the themes that will be studied by the chair, there are many uh, possibilities. Uh, but if we look to some of uh, Bernard Maris's favorite uh, subjects, I think we have plenty of inspiration. He had a very open and curious mind. Uh, and you can find any of these in his works as an economist and a journalist. But I think there's really one that is present throughout his works. And that is the question of ethics. 
because Maris was very concerned about questions of gratis and worthlessness or lack of use, uselessness, because contrary to economic theory, he said that what creates fundamental value is the l lack of worth, uh, it's hard to imagine anything more iconoclastic than that. It's got the exact opposite for most e economists uh, because everything for them is based on utility, whereas Mari said it's non-utility, the lack of use. Listen, the lack of usefulness that is uh, uh, at the heart of a value. So for him, this worthlessness and the gratis is one of the most essential conditions for economic development. And in his book, The anti manu he said, gratuity and solidarity are what make growth, invention, and richness uh, in spite of competition, which is essentially inefficient, so you can see he's quite a contrarian. And so for him, it's it's the free of charge which allows societies to develop. So in other words, if a capitalistic economy functions, it's only because it has taken over this notion of uh, the profit and the notion of the gratis, which it has inherited but doesn't produce. So this chair should think about the relationship between ethics, aesthetics, and the economy. The economic sciences should go back to the moral sciences, as Bernard said. That would be a fine idea. And so this means we also have to think about what are social bodies, what are the roots of the ties of solidarity, what are the values we want to share. As said himself, to think that all is individual is a huge mistake. And he, he also said, and economists hate this, is that we should prohibit the teaching of methodological individualism at university. So you can imagine that raised quite a few red flags. So just to conclude, I'd like to say a final word about to, to say how important this I, the idea of this chair is uh, because it really corresponds to who Bernard Maris was because he always wanted people to understand and even enjoy economics as a, as, a, as a teacher and as a journalist this was a driving idea for him my main contribution he said was to make economics accessible to the largest number and he added my works which are very critical and violent have taught people that behind all that jargon, the king is naked and he's even ignorant. And so this chair will have the difficult task of carrying on that useful work of deconstruction uh, and to share an understanding with everyone. Thank you.